This video is brought to you by Free Cash. If you've got time to game, then it's time to start getting paid for it. Use my link in the description and they'll hook you up with a bonus worth up to $250 and you'll get your first payout within the next hour. Now let's smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and get down to business. We have a problem with housing in the United States that not enough people are talking about because it means talking trash about very powerful people. But I want to talk about it because I'm angry. I'm talking about this map and this map and the worst one, this map. These maps are just a few of the cities in which large corporations are gobbling up residential real estate and depriving aspiring homeowners of achieving their American dream. There are zip codes out there in which more than 50% of homes are being purchased by investors explicitly with the goal of turning the single family house into a rental unit. We don't have enough construction of new homes as it is. We can talk about the reasons for that another time. But this massive influx of corporate buyers coming in with deep pockets and cheap credit, they're screwing everything else up for the rest of us and we're all just letting it happen. Not only do our tax and legal systems allow this behavior, but they actively encourage it. For corporations who can beat out regular buyers in the real estate game, this is a really, really good hustle. Before I go any further, I want to say that I don't have any fundamental problem with landlords. We want people to buy real estate and invest in it so they can improve it. We want there to be a supply of rental units for people that want to live somewhere for a short time and they don't want to buy. And I have absolutely no problem with somebody moving to a new house and rather than sell their old one, they become landlords of it. That's no problem. Sometimes it just makes sense for grandma prudence to downsize to a smaller home. But she doesn't want to sell her old one because she wants to leave it as an asset for her family. And that's fine. But we're not talking about Grandma Prudence here. We're talking about companies like Blackstone, Invitation Homes, and American Homes for Rent. These are companies with hundreds of millions in cash flow, tens of billions on their balance sheets, and billions of dollars in revenue, and the knowledge that if they continue to buy up residential real estate and keep it out of the hands of younger people, then there will be an entire generation that has to keep renting from them. And all of that money is coming straight out of the lower and middle classes pockets and going straight into their pockets. These real estate leeches know that the best targets for them are growing cities in their suburbs. Let's look at Jacksonville, Florida, the third largest city for real estate investment companies. Corporate home ownership is pretty modest in the western suburbs and then picks up the closer you get to the St. Johns River. But the highest zip code, 32209, where corporate landlords bought 54% of houses sold, looks like this. This is solidly lower middle class. I don't want to make too many judgments, but the people living here are probably not six-figure earners. So why buy up real estate here? An astute person might say that investors and corporations buying in this area is so high because this is an opportunity zone. An opportunity zone is an area that the government has designated with tax incentives in order to encourage investors to come through and buy property so they can improve the area. But this belief that corporate investment in this zip code is so high because it's an opportunity zone, well, that's not true. Jacksonville certainly has opportunity zones, but there doesn't appear to be an obvious correlation. In fact, there are opportunity zones where corporate buying is actually lower than adjacent non-opportunity zones. The real reason for large corporate buying in these lower and middle class neighborhoods is more likely the lack of competition from regular home buyers and the fact that people who are on welfare can't afford a lawyer when you illegally evict them. Let's look at Charlotte, North Carolina. In general, it's the same pattern. Corporate buying is the strongest just outside the city center. The highest corporate ownership is in the suburb to the northwest, itself adjacent to an opportunity zone, but not in it. A middle class area, this is what it looks like. And finally, Atlanta, the area of the highest corporate buying in the US at over one third of all homes sold. The pattern is virtually the same. And once again, opportunity zones don't appear to play much of a role. The highest corporate buying near the Red Ann neighborhood is marked with a blue flag, and you can see it's not an opportunity zone. The area looks like this, a happy suburb of blended lower and middle class homes. These professional leeches can swoop into these neighborhoods, make all cash offers above asking with which regular home buyers cannot compete, and can afford to waive contingencies and inspections with virtually no risk. Because if they need more money for repairs, they can dip into their multi-billion dollar lines of credit and write off all the expenses. And if you think this corporate trend ended this year with rising interest rates, think again. Regular home buyers are getting mortgages at about 5% interest, which stifles demand. But corporate borrowers can get rates at about half of that with their lines of credit. 
or borrow very close to the Fed rate at about a third of the average mortgage for a regular borrower. In essence, as the real estate market gets tighter for regular home buyers with interest rates rising, corporate buyers are in an even better position comparatively. Although there has been some decrease in corporate buying, there are only two areas in which the proportion versus regular home buyers has decreased. Those are Seattle and Milwaukee. This is Steven Schwartzman, CEO of Blackstone. Here's Dallas B. Tanner, CEO of Invitation Homes, and David Singaline, CEO of American Homes for Rent. Together, their net worth is almost $30 billion, and Schwartzman specifically makes a few $30 million political leadership contributions every election cycle. People like this are the ones who want to own your home, and in this next real estate winter, they will leverage their ability to borrow money at 1.7% interest to make a much larger offer on a house than you can at 6% interest. They'll try to present themselves as benefactors who make pleasant living conditions for their tenants. But read the UN Human Rights Council's letter to Mr. Schwartzman about Blackstone and Invitation Homes, and you'll discover a culture of threats and draconian punishments against tenants that are requesting minor routine maintenance. And when Blackstone is buying up houses in lower class neighborhoods, their tenants aren't in a position to bring a legal challenge against their landlord's army of corporate lawyers. And then I see these corporate landlords saying that they're just a fraction of all home buying that most homes are still being purchased by people who intend to live there. While it is true that most houses are still being purchased by common folk like you and me, most is a really low bar. You're going to tell me that because only 45% of homes in zip code 30331 are being bought by investors, this isn't a problem. I mean, we have at least 16 zip codes across the Atlanta area where corporations are buying more than 40% of homes. Who are you fooling by telling us that most homes are still being purchased by regular home buyers? You're gonna tell me that this 40% bite out of supply isn't a problem? We're facing a future in which common people will own nothing and these corporate parasites will lord over us. And again, this isn't about Grandma Prudence. When Grandma Prudence dies, and she might die soon, then her heirs are going to inherit the house and they'll probably sell it. That home will then re-enter the supply of houses. But Blackstone is not going to die, and it can afford to ride out a recession. So when Blackstone gets its hands on a house, there's really very little reason for them to ever sell it. I don't have all the answers, but something has to be done to stem this trend. In my opinion, one of the biggest misses in US law is that we've allowed these real estate corporations to buy up entire riverfront neighborhoods and turn them into Airbnb rentals, or buy a bunch of lower class neighborhoods and turn them into fiefdoms. Perhaps the first step would be to find some means of preventing these real estate companies from borrowing money at rates at less than half of what common people can. It's bad enough that Blackstone can offer $70,000 more for a house than we can. It's even worse when they can borrow more money at a fraction of our interest rate by selling these AAA graded bonds. In my America, I want middle class people to have a fair shake at housing, not get beaten at every turn by large corporations. Or if we really want to send a message, we can do what they did in Berlin and pass a referendum that seizes houses from large investment corporations. If I spend enough time thinking about the housing trends in the United States, I can frustrate myself to the point where seizing the means of accommodation does not seem like such a crazy idea. A behavior by these companies that I really want to encourage is what American Homes for Rent is doing in some cities, including Charlotte. American Homes for Rent is building houses specifically to rent them out. And personally, I think this is the way it ought to be. If you want to be a corporate landlord, then you should be adding to the housing supply exactly the same amount that you're taking away. And building the house yourself is a perfect way to achieve that. Now, I'd rather see these building supplies and labor go toward people's houses that are actually going to own them, but this built-to-rent model is definitely better than large companies coming through and buying up swaths of houses and leaving people with fewer and fewer options. Although this information is hard to digest, I want to remind everybody that the person who owns a few houses and rents them out is not your enemy. If they are a respectful landlord, then they do not deserve your resentment. But these large corporate landlords who get to play by different rules than the rest of us bribe politicians, charge or threaten their tenants when they request routine maintenance, and prey on the poorest neighborhoods, these corporate landlords are not your friends, and their names are Blackstone, Invitation Homes, and American Homes for Rent. And there are others. Please, no one graffiti corporate offices. This is not about starting the American Great Leap Forward. All I want to do is share my observations of this very serious problem, and explain how urgently we need to solve this before these real estate leeches gobble up another 30% of houses during the next real estate recession, which we are already in. Thanks for watching everyone. Join our free Discord, smash that like button, and subscribe for more. I'll see you next time.